All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're checking out Sea Cleaner, the for home use only version, the free version, the one I feel like a lot of people are going to use um, because you don't have to pay a monthly fee for something that just occasionally cleans out your computer. So the idea behind Sea Cleaner is it goes through your computer and it finds all the junk files that don't get used very often, if at all since the first time you used it, and it removes them so that they don't bog down and fill up your hard drive. It'll also do things like clean up your registry, and if you pay for it, it'll also try to optimize your computer by turning off things that try to auto start when you restart your computer, which can slow them down if you don't run off of SSD drive. So the first window here that you'll be presented with when you first open this up is a PC health check. And this kind of works for the most part, but it lacks a lot of fine controls, which I'll go over here in a minute. So if I tell it to scan my PC, and I'm just gonna let it ignore Google Chrome and Microsoft OneDrive because I don't feel like closing them right now. And I let it scan through my computer for junk. It'll probably find quite a bit because everybody's computer pretty quickly accrues like old cache files for your browser, which are things like uh, to make loading your most commonly visited websites faster, it saves a copy to your PC, all sorts of stuff like that, just kind of junk up your computer. So right now it says it found a bunch of tracking cookies under the privacy section. It found 91 gigs of junk that it wants to remove, which is probably good. I don't want junk on my computer. It wants to disable one of the apps that automatically starts on startup and then it wants to update three of my apps. Now, two of these are for pro use only. The other ones are things like freeing up space and cleaning up my privacy, which is probably a good idea. It'll even let me look at what all it wants to remove. And I can, well, actually it doesn't give me a fine toothed example, which is why I don't really like this particular part of this tool. But if you're not too worried about it, um, you can just tell it to make it better by automatically deleting everything that it doesn't want on here. And for most people, you're probably good to go. Now, the reason why this might be a little bit annoying and the reason why I like having a finer tooth control is because you're not necessarily always ready to re-log in to all of the websites that you use on your web browser every single day. So what do I mean by that? So if we go down to a custom clean, it allows me to set and delete all of this information from different programs, which is good. It's very good. The problem is it'll also allow me to do things like delete cookies and saved like sessions on my browser, which will kick you off and make you have to reload and re-log into all those different services. So if you're not necessarily ready for that and you want to hold off on that for a couple of days till you got your work done, understandable. Don't clear out every single program that it wants to clear out. So let's walk through this. So what it wants to do is it wants to clear out internet cache, which I said is like backup copies of websites you go to a lot, your internet history, your cookies, which is good to clear those out once in a while anyway, because that's things like tracking cookies, where Google sees what websites you go to to try to give you ads, your different session data, all of these different things, a very good idea for you to clear them out once in a while. Same thing with Edge Chromium, that's the other version of uh, Microsoft Edge. We wanna clear out the internet cache, the cookies, the internet history, download history, and then last download location, all of that's good to get rid of. I don't think a lot of computers have Internet Explorer, but if it's on here, we'll nuke everything about it just for fun. Uh, except for the saved passwords, just in case. Um, Windows Explorer, thumbnail and run uh, start menu stuff is probably good to delete and reset. And then for the system, it'll want to empty the recycling bin empty temporary files, empty the clipboard. The clipboard is like when you copy and paste, the stuff that you're copying sits in an, an imaginary clipboard. It's good to get rid of that periodically. Memory dumps are like when something bad happens to your computer, it has a memory dump to try to figure out what went wrong. Check disk file fragments you can get rid of, file, Windows log files. Pretty much anything that's on this enabled by default is fairly safe for you to erase and not worry about it. But if you're concerned about like privacy, you can also set windows to erase the free space on your computer so that there's nothing there that hasn't been overwritten. 
Uh, you can also have it erase the DNS cache, which can help with networking problems occasionally and those sorts of good things. If it sounds like you want to reset something on this list and you're familiar with what it does and it's not on by default, go ahead and add it. If you don't know what something is and you're concerned, just leave it unchecked. The worst case scenario, there's a little bit extra junk sitting on your computer and life goes on. The world will not end. Um, you can probably do things like get rid of Windows event logs, unless your computer's been having problems lately. Those types of logs can be really helpful in figuring out what's wrong. Otherwise, you know, it happens. And here's the one I was talking about, wiping free space. Now, this one I wouldn't recommend because it takes forever, and most people don't have things on their computer that somebody is going to try to recover that way for weird purposes. So don't worry about that. Um, you can also change, like, Windows downloads. You can... Clear the app programs, recently downloaded, compressed files, all that stuff, but I'm going to leave that alone. And then here it can go through and erase stuff from other browsers. Like, I'll let it erase stuff from Firefox that I use for tutorials on occasion. Spotify is fine. Windows Store can be cleaned up. Um, yeah, Adobe Illustrator is fine. Apple install fi stall files, that's fine. Um, clearing out Steam, VLC Media Player, Windows Media Player. That sounds like a good idea, actually. Those are probably full of like half installed programs that need to be cleaned up. So let's just go ahead and click on analyze. The only thing I'm not really doing right now is I'm not really doing Chrome because like I said before, I don't necessarily want to uh, erase everything in Chrome right now. And I'm not too worried about Microsoft OneDrive because I pretty much never use it. So it found 92 gigs of stuff, even more stuff than it found when I was doing the health check. So it's good to kind of have an idea of what it's looking for and to control it because you never know what it's going to locate and want to, to, to delete. In fact, my recycling bin is full of a lot of stuff, like 90, most of what it's deleting is actually in my, my deletion like folder. So it's probably good to run this. So let's go ahead and run it. Uh, it's going to permanently delete all of these files, which I'm not worried about because again, I went through with a fine tooth comb, all the different items in this list in order to delete them. And then it'll go ahead and delete all these old junk files. I don't really want to mess with OneDrive because I don't use it. And bingo, bango, boom, all of those junk files are removed. And again, a lot of the default stuff that it wants to remove is probably not going to be earth shattering. Worst case scenario, you'll have to log into like your email again. Not really a big problem, but if you're not ready to do that, just uncheck it. Easy enough to do. Other stuff that it can do are like the performance enhancer. What this is going to do is it's going to go look at your settings and other stuff set up on your computer to see if it can recommend things to make your computer run a little bit better. Like for changing your startup times, it'll look and see if your computer has anything on it that uh, tries to boot up when you first restart your computer, but it's not really critical. Like me turning on Adobe stuff first thing in the morning isn't critical but it does it anyway when i restart my computer so it'll run through and it'll look at all of those things to see if anything can be changed so that windows can run a little bit better and out of curiosity let's just run this and if i don't like what it says i'll show you how to do it manually it's very handy most of what this program does you can probably do yourself although i wouldn't recommend trying to manually delete all the junk files on your computer so how to use performance optimizer scan for programs, put them into sleep mode and check your status to see the improvements. Okay. So in general, this is trying to find things that run in the background that maybe don't need to run in the background because they're eating up data and space. That's fair. Like I can probably kill the EA um, play app because it runs in the background and it's an obviously it's honestly a bad launcher anyway. So I could put that to sleep. Wacom tablet, I use that occasionally. I wouldn't want to put that to sleep. PDF reader, I occasionally use that. That's supposed to be hot off, but I don't know why not. I'll just turn that off manually. I don't like Microsoft OneDrive, but I also don't want CCleaner to be in charge of it. I use Gazo like every day to save copies of screenshots to share with people. After Effects probably doesn't need to be on in the background, but it's low. Anything that's on the list is like low power drain you can probably ignore in this screen 
But if you feel like you want to use this tool, you can just tell it to put all the, the things that you don't actually directly use every day into sleep mode because it's just eating up processing power. And that can be really a big slowdown on an older computer, and you don't want that. So this is actually not a bad tool. I kind of like that. Driver updater, this will just scan your computer for drivers that need to be updated. I Oh, is, is updating safe? Yeah, up, up, updating should be fine. Let's just scan. Just scan for the updates. I know it's trying to explain to me, but I've already run through this, but then I reinstalled it. Okay, so I actually did find a couple of things. I have some audio drivers that need to be updated. I do know that, it, that NVIDIA wants me to update, so that's one's pending in the background. Intel's got some stuff that wants to update. Okay, so this is actually a really nice tool. It actually did find some stuff that I do know I need to update. That way I can make sure that everything runs in tip-top shape. And this is a little bit better than your average uh, random driver update program that I've run into, because a lot of those will install sketchy side programs on your computer, like a, an antivirus you didn't ask for. A do or a C Cleaner doesn't really do that. They're pretty upfront about it, seeing like, hey, do you want to try this antivirus? And you're like, no. So they don't try to hide that from you, which is nice. So if you needed to update any of these, like I do, I will do that off screen, but you can find that here and it'll let you click update all so that you can begin the update process. Oh no, they want you to pay for this. So never mind. If you do pay for it, you'll get this. Otherwise, it'll just let you click on details so that you can do so manually, which again, isn't bad. Like it'll at least tell you that you need to update them so you can handle that yourself and you don't have to worry about it. Registry. This will scan for problems in your computer. Not really problems, but like when your computer installs stuff, updates stuff, there's lots of little bits left over in the registry that kind of just are there. You don't really need them. So this can scan for them. And then you can just click on review the selected issues. And I've never really had a reason to back these up. I've never like done a registry cleanup and had a problem arise. But if you're concerned because your computer has been having problems lately, don't don't use the registry cleaning tool. Just until the, the problems are resolved on your machine, don't play around with programs like CCleaner. Talk to somebody technical in your life that can help you fix it and then clean out all the clutter. You know, like fix one problem before you cause more. So I'm just going to tell it to fix all selected issues. Boom, done. Easy enough. Let's scan for more. There's usually more that kind of escape the first purge, but not many, admittedly. So I'll just review and clean them. I'm not going to back anything up. There, it looks cleaned. All very nice. Some of the other stuff that they've got is like this tools thing here allows you to go through and manually uninstall programs. This, this is like the list version of like the manually update stuff. Oh, it's, it's having a moment. Okay. So as you can see, it does it does lag a little bit as it's trying to get like together like the list of programs on your computer that you might want to update. And it did have to scan it earlier, so that does make sense. Like it's got to be like, okay, here's all the software on your computer. Here's our list of like the version numbers. Do you need to update any of this stuff? That's actually a nice newer utility that they didn't always have. And I rather appreciate that that exists. So I'll probably have to go through and update these later. Startup programs. These are things that like to start up when your computer starts up. If you don't want them to start up, you can just click disable. Like I don't need Overwolf. I'm going to do that for a tutorial. I honestly forgot that it was installed. I'll have to do that tutorial tomorrow. OneDrive. I don't use it. I don't know why it's always on. Just disable it. Done. Easy peasy. That will stop it from automatically booting up when your computer first turns on. But if it sounds like, you know, something like security health from Microsoft, leave that alone. That's probably important for your system. So, yeah, I like that. Browser plugins, this will allow you to turn things on or off from your browser plugins like Java or the helper tool. You can analyze your disks to see if there's something wrong with them. Actually, no, this is a, this is more, this is less about what's wrong with them and more about what's taking up space. 
You can delete duplicate files that it finds. Like if you've downloaded like a bunch of documents for work and you think you've got duplicates, it can delete the duplicates. You can create and remove system restore points and you can wipe a drive, which is, I don't remember it having that before. So that's very nice to have. Now, one thing that you should do is go into options and then there's things like smart cleaning. I don't like this because it puts this obnoxious pop-up that pops up in the corner of my window and nothing pisses me off more than a pop-up. So go ahead and come into your settings and disable the enable smart cleaning feature because that is an annoying pop-up. If you need to be reminded to do things and this is your office computer and that's not going to drive you bonkers, leave it on. Otherwise, I would turn it off because I hate pop-ups in all their forms. So yeah, you can go through with a fine tooth comb and check out some of these settings for yourselves at home. A lot of it's pretty straightforward, like settings is settings. Cookies lets you delete cookies from your computer or quarantine them or let them keep running. You can set custom files that you want to include when you're going through and cleaning things out. You can exclude certain folders. Don't clean this folder. It's full of important stuff. Don't touch it. If you're paying for it, you can set it to automatically clean your computer at periodically, which might be useful in an office environment. Don't like smart cleaning because it has pop-ups, but that's pretty self-explanatory. You can set up what users on the computer can use it, which ones can't. You can tell it if you want it to be automatically kept up to date. You got some more advanced stuff here. That's all pretty self-explanatory about the behavior of the program. Do you want it to prompt you to back up registry when you're cleaning up registry issues or not? That sort of thing. This is more information about privacy. Do you want to help improve their products by sending them anonymous data? All that sort of stuff you can see here. More information about the product and where to go to learn more. And then the license key, if you want to pay for it, you put that in here. I believe that's also what the upgrade thing is. It wants you to pay for it. But for my purposes, this is something that like once every six months, boot this up, clean your computer, and then you're done. That's it. You don't really need to mess with this that often. Also, it's kind of pricey for a year for something that like I honestly feel like you only need to use like maybe three or four times in a year. So just just saying, if this is something that has a lot of value for you, you feel like you need to clean out your cluttered old files a lot, like having it automatically do that in the background for $30 a year isn't that terrible. So if that's for you, that's for you. So this has been a brief look at how CCleaner cleans the crud off of your computer. I actually know for a fact that CCleaner is actually code for crap cleaner was what it was originally called when they were developing it. And it just became CCleaner. And it, it does a pretty good job. It's good to run programs like this every once in a while to keep the junk off your system. So that's it for this one. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll put the link in the video description to download this. Just note that when you download it, there is a free version. Don't try. Don't click the free trial. Don't click Get Pro. The free version's right here. It says CCleaner free. And then you download it. It's got all these fancy features that are X'd out. Just click on that one. And then it'll be like, are you sure? And you're like, yep, give me the free version. And then it'll download it for you. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. And have a good one.